In this video, I'll give you an inkling of what can be done with shapes and selections. Let's get started. I'm using Affinity Photo 2.0.4. Here's our example image. I'll add some shapes and turn them into selections and then add some effects. First, a star. I'll drag it out to the size I want while holding down the Shift key to keep it proportional. I'll click the Presets button up here on the Context Toolbar and change it to something else. Now I'll use the Move tool to position and size it further. Now a double star. And I'll select something from the presets again. And Move tool to position and size. If you forget to choose the Move tool, you'll end up drawing another star. You can undo it by pressing Command Z or Control Z in Windows. Now a triangle. Okay, now we want to turn these shapes into selections. But how? Well, there's at least two ways. One has three steps and the other two. So we'll use the two-step approach. I'll be using the Flood Select tool to make my selections since it selects the entire shape with a single mouse click. But it won't work on these shapes because they're vector shapes. And what are vector shapes? Basically, it has to do with the way they're drawn and stored in the project file. The shapes themselves are not stored, only a mathematical formula and set of coordinates, sort of like instructions on how to draw them. And because of this, the Flood Select tool won't work on them. We'll have to convert them to pixels first. This process of converting the pixels is called rasterization, which we'll do right now. It's quite easy. I'll convert all three shapes at once. I'll select the triangle layer, and holding down Shift, I'll select the other two shape layers. Now from the Layer menu, I'll select Rasterize. And now they're all pixel layers. Let's start with this big shape here. First, I'll select the layer that represents it. And then the Flood Select tool. Now I'll just click anywhere inside the shape to select it. All we want is the selection, so we can now delete the shape since we no longer need it. Its layer is already selected, so I'll just click on the trash can to delete it. An important thing to understand before we continue is this. When a selection is active, that is, when you see the marching ants, any adjustments, live filters, any painting, vector shapes, etc. will be visible and or have influence only within the selected area. That's the area surrounded by the marching ants. So with our selection active, let's add a black and white adjustment. I'll adjust it a bit. As you can see, the black and white adjustments effects are limited to the selected area only. As long as the selection is active, we can continue adding adjustments, filters, what have you. So let's add a live filter effect. Let's go with Voronoi. I may be pronouncing that incorrectly. Click the live filters icon and select Voronoi from the list. I'll increase the line width a little. I'm done with this shape, so I'll clear the selection by pressing Command D or Control D in Windows. Let's do the other star. So first select its layer in the Layers panel. The Flood Select tool won't work otherwise. I already have the Flood Select tool selected, so I'll just click inside the star to select it. And now I'll delete its layer. Of course the selection remains. I'll add a Voronoi effect to this star as well, and increase the line width a bit. I'll clear the selection by pressing Command or Control D. 
Now the triangle. First select the layer and then click inside the shape to select it. Now delete the layer. Let's do a curves adjustment for this one. I'm going to set the blend mode to exclusion and make some adjustments. That looks good. If we zoom in by pressing Command plus or Control plus in Windows, we can see some unwanted effect on the woman's pant leg. So let's get rid of that. I'll add a mask and apply it to the curves adjustment. Drag the mask with the mouse over the curves adjustments layer and move it over to the right until the little black and white picture beside the layer's thumbnail becomes highlighted and release the mouse. Expand the curves adjustment layer to reveal the mask beneath. Now we'll use a black paintbrush to remove the unwanted effect from her pant legs. We'll select the paintbrush tool, set its color, and make sure the mask is selected before we begin painting. Notice how the selection constrains the brush's effect. You can use the square bracket keys to adjust the size of the brush if necessary. If you're mystified by masks, I left a link in the description to a video that covers them in detail. Let's clear the selection and press Command or Control-0 to zoom back out. All right. But wait, what if you want to move a shape? Is it possible? Actually, it is, but we have to reactivate the shape selection first. Lucky for us, that's super easy. Let's do the star on the right side of the rainbow. First, select its layer. To identify its layer, look at the little black and white representations beside each layer's thumbnail. Holding down Command or Control in Windows, click on the little black and white representation to bring the selection back. Now to move it, just select the Move tool. Of course, now that the selection's active again, you can add more effects if you wish. That star was easy to move because it has only one effect associated with it. The large shape on the left, however, has two effects, black and white and Voronoi. Moving that will be trickier. Holding down Command, let's click on its little black and white picture to reactivate the selection. Now click on the layer to select it and holding down Shift, click the black and white adjustment so both adjustments are selected. And now we can move it around. The triangle, because it has a mask on it, won't work so well. I'll activate the selection and then click on the mask to select it. When we try to move it, only the selection is moving and not the effect. To move this shape, we would have to delete the mask first. You can also just move a selection. I'll reactivate the smaller star's selection, but I won't select the layer it's on. Now I can move the selection only. Okay, let's clear the selection and delete all the layers we've added to get back to our original photo. Holding down Shift, select all the layers and then delete them. What if you want to add a single adjustment to two or more selections? I'll add three rectangles. To add a single adjustment to all three rectangles, we need all three selections to be active at the same time. 
To select all three at the same time, we first have to merge them into a single pixel layer. So first I'll rasterize all the layers. Now from the Layers menu, I'll select Merge Selected. Instead of three layers, one for each rectangle, now we have one pixel layer with all three rectangles on it. Now I can select all three with the Flood Select tool. Select the Flood Select tool and set its mode to Add by pressing this button on the Context toolbar. Now I can select all three rectangles. I'll delete the layer and add a half tone live filter. As you can see, the single half tone live filter has been applied to all three rectangles. There is a drawback to this, however. You can only move them around as a group, not singly. I'll delete the half tone filter layer and clear the selection. One last thing. Basically, anything you can select can be used as a shape. To demonstrate, I'll use the paintbrush. First, I'll add an empty pixel layer by clicking on the Add Pixel Layer icon. Now I'll paint with the brush. I can now select what I painted and add a recolor adjustment. So there you go. Let your imagination run wild. There's really no limit to what you can do. Thanks for watching.